good morning folks welcome to Walters Aircraft Works it's a uh, Friday good Friday 2017 we're out here in the shop this morning getting ready to start a new project here and be converting this car over to an EV a you may get a little help along the way from uh, this guy and uh, well the other one where did he go there he is that's uh, Jetson on the left, Ollie on the right, with a couple of clowns. I'm about to let them out doors for uh, chipmunk patrol here in a minute. Well, like I said, we're going to convert this car over to an EV. We've been collecting parts and doing research now for uh, probably a year or so, and I think we're getting ready to get started. Lots of videos out there on YouTube for uh, car conversions, but I haven't really seen one that was very comprehensive. I'd like to take you guys through uh, from start to finish and uh, hopefully we can learn along the way have a few laughs and uh, help each other out all right let's let the chipmunk patrol out so we don't have to hear the meowing first one's jetson second one's oliver well i guess oliver's out first hey let's talk about this car for a little bit why uh, why we picked this particular car this type of car and why we decided to convert the car to uh, to EV. The pick was fairly easy. My wife drove a car similar to this to college. She uh, always had a fondness for these uh, Gen 1 RX-7s and uh, I had been researching EV conversions for quite some time and it just seemed like a good candidate for the conversion. Got pretty lucky with this particular car We'd looked uh, on Craigslist uh, for, I don't know, two or three months, uh, just really looking at the pictures, and uh, boy, it was a, a little bit discouraging. There was uh, quite a few cars for sale, but all seemed to be, uh, well, showing their age, 35-year-old cars, um, you know, tend to, to look like 35-year-old cars, and pretty, uh, pretty wore out. This one was listed uh, down in Savannah, um, not too far of a drive for us. Uh, pictures looked great inside, outside, 72,000 original miles on it. The engine had been removed. A uh, guy uh, locked the engine up. I think he autocrossed it. Uh, it has some aftermarket springs and anti-sway bars on it. And kind of, I think it has been repainted once. Um, no rust on it to speak of. So just a, a great car. looked looked good in the pictures, presented well in the pictures. Uh, we couldn't believe what we were seeing. Uh, we just we decided we better go uh, better go get it if it's all that it seemed to be, and it was. Guy listed it for two thousand uh, dollars. We paid him eighteen hundred for it. Put it on a car dolly. Drove it home. All right. So uh, why did we decide to do an EV? Are we uh, you know? Sticking it to the government by uh, getting out of the road tax on the fuel? Are we are we saving money by not buying gas? Well, I don't know if any of that's uh, really worth it anymore. Back when fuel was $5 a gallon, yeah, it might have worked. The numbers might have worked. But nowadays, uh, fuel's cheap and uh, batteries are expensive. So if you do the math, eh, I don't think it really pays anymore. But... Hey, I enjoy the engineering side of it. My wife wanted a, a neat car to drive. Um, the mileage that she drives each day back and forth to work, um, I think it's going to fit real good into a car that gets a uh, 50, 60 mile range. We're hoping for a little bit better than that, but if we get 50 or 60 miles out of it, I think uh, we'll be in good shape. Hey, let's uh, take a look at the car and what I've done and uh, where we plan on going from here. Spent a couple of days cleaning up the engine compartment here, degreasing it, and uh, just cleaning up the wiring, taking out all the unnecessary wiring, all the engine related uh, system stuff, and uh, just leaving and testing the uh, components that we wanted to, uh, to, to keep, all the headlights and uh, tail lights, uh, all the uh, uh, stuff that we will need on an EV vehicle. I just wanted to make sure all that stuff continued to work. 
and uh, function properly. I use my uh, lawnmower battery there for testing purposes. We'll uh, we'll change that out later on down the road as we uh, as we work on the car or as we get a little bit farther along in the project. I think the uh, Mazda is going to be a good candidate for uh, EV vehicle due to the uh, the simplicity of its systems. Some of these uh, later model cars might be a little bit more daunting to uh, to convert one just because of the integration of computers and uh, electronics into the car. This one's pretty straightforward. The uh, steering on it is a regular steering box system. It's not a uh, power assisted rack and pinion or no power steering on it at all. So I think that's gonna work real good. We won't need a power steering pump. We do have a, a brake booster valve and uh, that's going to require vacuum, so we'll have to run uh, some type of vacuum pump. Looks like there's plenty of those available in the uh, EV world, so that shouldn't be too difficult to do. Air conditioning, well, that's a whole nother story. Uh, this car originally was not an AC car. Um, it fooled me. The uh, oddness of it is the uh, heater control in the uh, Side, inside of the car, in the cabin of the car, has all the, the workings for a AC car. And uh, when we originally purchased it, I thought it was an AC car just because of that. And to get it home, start poking around and look, and there's no penetrations through the firewall for an evaporator. Um, so it was not an AC car. Here is the, the factory plugs that they put in and remove when they install the evaporator. Um, the wiring is all in place, but it has never had AC uh, installed in the car. Why the heater control, and I don't believe it's ever been changed, but why the heater control has the AC buttons and uh, the settings, I have no idea. And I would like to put AC in the car. Uh, that's another uh, nut we'll have to crack along the process and the simplest way to do it would be without AC but we do live in a hotter climate so uh, you know got to keep the wife cool or uh, or there's other problems to follow so uh, we'll try to uh, try to solve that problem solve that riddle uh, as we go along all right here's what I was talking about uh, heater control on it showing air conditioning it's got uh, a way to select the uh, temperature for, for AC or the vents for AC. It's got the air conditioning push, uh, you know, turn the compressor on and off. Uh, all this stuff seems to function just like it had AC in it. The switch um, was malfunctioning. It, it had a little problem internally inside the switch. I was able to take it apart and, uh, and fix it, put it back together, and uh, it works just like it's supposed to although the light back here that, that lights up this little tiny blue light in the center is not hooked up um, why I don't know I don't quite understand uh, how this car got delivered without a compressor and an evaporator but uh, with this heater selector uh, in it I don't quite understand it I lied earlier, it doesn't have 72,000 original miles on it. It has uh, 79,000, almost 80,000 miles on it. I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Uh, the rest of the car uh, tells the story. It, it, it hasn't been driven a lot. It's in really good shape. All right, well, let's take a look at the motor. The motor is a uh, AC motor built by these people, High Performance Electric Vehicle Systems, which uh, is what HPEVS stands for, a company out of California. A great, uh, seems like a really good company, built a good product. Uh, this is a AC50 motor. I believe it puts out around uh, 88 horsepower and 108 pounds of torque somewhere in there. Um, we ordered the system with the controller and uh, throttle 
controller, a motor, and a few other odds and ends that were in there. It's a, it's a kit, a conversion kit. We'll, uh, we'll look at more of that later on as we, we get into the build. Uh, the whole motor and controller and uh, various parts of the kit came to uh, 42, 23, 83. So 40, just over $4,200 deliver. I ordered that from a company called uh, Electric Car Parts, ECP. I believe they're out of Utah. But uh, they they ordered the, the motor from uh, HP EVS, and uh, I believe they drop shipped it right to uh, right to the house. They made kind of a big deal out of their uh, on their website about delivery and flatbed and uh, how you're gonna get it delivered. Well, it wasn't really that big of a deal. We did go pick it up at the uh, the trucking terminal. It was on one pallet. Uh, the motor itself weighs 115 pounds. Um, the whole box, pallet, and all skid weighed uh, not much more than that. Probably, I know it was less than 150 pounds. So it wasn't a big deal. Went and picked it up and uh, slid it in the back of my. Actually, I loaded it with a forklift in the back of my uh, pickup truck. I drove it home and uh, I unloaded it myself just by uh, taking each box off the pallet wasn't that big of a deal so don't get uh, don't get wrapped up around the axle about that not a big deal um, and we'll have the uh, speed control laid out here uh, in a little bit but it's uh, a nicely packaged and uh, neat looking uh, well here it is let me show it to you it's uh, right here pretty neat uh, looking gadget well designed, well built. It's made by a company called Curtis, Curtis Controllers, and uh, not a big aluminum heat sink. And, uh, looks like it'll do the job nicely. And a few other, uh, here's the rest of the components. So wiring harness, and there's a throttle control down there, and uh, gauge, and a few other gadgets and gizmos that we'll have to figure out along the way. But the uh, I believe there's some decent instructions in there as well. Hey, the purpose of this video today was to uh, just kind of introduce the project and uh, to hopefully pique your interest enough where you'll, uh, you'll follow along uh, with this project. I have no doubt that I'll need uh, help along the way. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are that are watching these videos that have uh, knowledge in a lot of different areas and could be beneficial uh, to this project. So I welcome your comments. Uh, please uh, leave your comments below. Um, I know there's probably going to be some uh, internet YouTube trolls out there that will leave negative comments, but uh, hey, that's just the way it goes and uh, that's okay as, as well. So uh, next video is going to be uh, getting right into the nuts and bolts of it. The first major task on this project will be to connect the uh, motor to the transmission.